Welcome back to Friday Night Lights on Fox 12 Oregon, presented by Pacific Office Automation. Well, Friday's first round home game for the Jervis Cougars was a piece of history after their first winning season since 2000, winning as many games in 2023 that they did over the past five years combined. Earlier in the week, we were invited out to practice in Cougar Country, where the new generation enjoying a blast to the past. Yeah. It's back to the future in Jervis. First time hosting in God knows how many years, 50, 100, 70, 70 years. Um, so it's a big game, a uh, big thing for the city of Jervis, finally being able to wear the name with pride and uh, make something special happen here. Eisenhower was president, a gallon of gas was 29 cents, and Eggo Waffles first popped from a toaster. What it is believed to be the last time the Jervis High Gridiron hosted a home playoff game in leather helmets in 1953. But it may have been even longer than that. They don't have a record that they have ever hosted a game. And so somebody said 1923, and I said, okay, well, 1923. But that's what we've been. But it could have been that they've never hosted one because they can't find it in their books. We haven't done what we've done to get where we're, where we're at now and make excuses. Does that make sense? Yes, coach. It's a turnaround of the century in Cougar Country, an 8-1 and one season to claim the second seed out of the 2A Tri-River Conference. 8-1 and one is something that hasn't been done here ever. So... We've gotten to that, you know, uh, milestone. Now we're hosting our playoff game. Now we need to get past that milestone. I want defense to get the pennies on. J.J. Navarrete is a class of 2002 alum from nearby Woodburn who took over the Jervis program as head coach during the pandemic-fueled freshman year for the current Cougars senior class. We worked. We played a uh, varsity schedule with the JV squad, but we didn't never made an excuse. We took our lashings like anybody does, and we rolled with it. You got two minutes. Two JJ minutes works control. construction by day and has commanded respect in his four years of building up the confidence in the culture of the Cougs. I think Jervis chose me, man. Jay's been there for me. You know, he's like a like a father that I never had. And preaching us as family like means a lot to everyone. One, two, three. Family. Four, five, six. Excellence. Yeah, so from no wins to a decade-plus best of three victories last fall to that sweet success now here in the new nine-man football era. The Cougs tonight against Toledo, they won 24-12. to They'll be at Oakland for round two. High School Spotlight, sponsored by Subaru. Subaru loves learning. Yeah, this week's High School Spotlight shines upon one of the best to ever do it in the track and on the pitch from the center, Washington. Match night in the center, Washington. Senior year, like, let's do it. Sensational senior midfielder Sheila Bradley accelerates the Wildcat attack. We don't have a very big school, so I would say there's a really big sense of community here. Bradley is a leader by example for the Trico League co-champions from 1A La Center High. What is that love of soccer? What has it been for you in your life? It's been my life. <laughs> soccer and studies. Miss Bradley is humble as the 5'5", 17-year-old with a 3.8 GPA carries a confidence on the LC pitch with her 128 career goals and counting. I'm going to get a ball in the trophy case, hopefully. Bradley is also the school record holder in the spring on the track in the 100 and 400 meter dashes. I'm trying to get the long jump one. I think it's 18-3 right now, and I've jumped 17-9, so trying to get that. After high school ball, Bradley suits up for the Thorns Academy, where she was named the ECNL Northwest Conference Player of the Year. It's like the experiences that come with it that I think have been probably the, like, the most rewarding. I have actually had the opportunity to train with the Thorns first team because of it. I got to meet Sophia Smith and I got to meet like Crystal Dunn. A pair of American stars just down I-5 in the Rose City and Shayla herself was in red, white and blue after being invited to the U-17 United States National Team Camp this past June in North Carolina. That was really cool. That was, that was probably like one of the coolest things that's ever happened to me. No one's ever really done that from here and so I think I'm hoping put a, put a name on the map and that's Again, all of this is just really cool. <laughs> cool as it's come. It's also been all earned, like her commitment to learn at and play for Rutgers University. I'm signing actually next week. Inking and thinking about something in business. There was a, so much happening in such a short period of time. And I think I really had to focus on like what was important to me. And the coaches just really showed that they were like going to take care of me and like going to like push me to that next level. 
Well, Piscataway, New Jersey is some 2,900 miles from the center. The Scarlet Knights are in the Big Ten, which means Shayla will get some road trips back to the Pacific Northwest against the Washington Huskies and Oregon Ducks. And I'm excited that I feel at least every few years we'll come back and like a lot of my friends can show up to the games. One, two, three, go! You're watching Friday Night Lights on Fox 12 Oregon, presented by Pacific Office Automation.